Hey, I am Layla Ajaralu, and over the last year, I've been collaborating with the AIGA to figure out how we can get more women into positions of leadership within the design industry. The Gender Equity in Design Toolkit will help do that. But first, I want to share with you some of the pieces of key research that I uncovered during the project. Deep inside our brains, each one of us hosts a range of gender biases that influence the way we perceive others. No one is immune to these. And studies have found that making people aware of their biases doesn't erase them at all. In fact, it often makes them more pervasive. So the Gender Equity Toolkit, it's designed to help foster equity in the workplace by busting through gender biases and building new norms through empathy. Like it or not, we all have gendered expectations that subconsciously influence the way we see other people, especially when it comes to leadership. So research has found that the dominant frame of what it means to be a leader is imbued with all of these very male traits, such as aggressiveness, assertiveness, and authority. And because of this, women have to chameleon themselves into this pre-existing mold Yet once they get to the position of leadership, they are expected to fulfill the more womanly stereotype of being sensitive, caring, and empathetic. So we just can't win. I mean, all of this creates what is called a double bind, where we're expected to basically be two different opposing personas in the same role. This is just one of the many invisible obstacles that inhibit our ability as women to equitably access leadership roles. So to overcome this, what we need to do is not only redesign these brain biases that we have, but it create entirely new frames and models around what it means to be a leader. In the past, gender-related issues were really obvious, uh, but nowadays they're a lot more covert, often occurring in very subtle ways, such as microaggressions, some of which you might not even notice. In fact, many women I spoke to during the research relayed stories of this, but they themselves were confused about what actually was impeding their ability to progress. There's a big difference between explicit and implicit biases. Explicit acts of bias are really obvious. They're the sexist, inappropriate judgments that people make very overtly. Whereas implicit biases are the subtle actions that appear in many insidious ways. These are the main types of biases that we have to deal with today. And so our task is to challenge them, to rewrite the code that created the biases to begin with. So all of this is topped off with this strange phenomena that has emerged in our workplaces, where women take responsibility for what's called the silent office housework from cleaning up after meetings to organizing social events. These types of communal activities fit in with the outdated gendered stereotype of womanly activity. And what's more, research has discovered that this type of extra work reduces women's opportunity to progress. As basically they commit valuable work time to activities that fall well outside their job description. So we may have busted through the glass ceiling but let's not ignore the new pervasive sticky floor syndrome, where women get stuck in middle management. And there's also the glass cliff phenomenon, where women are put into positions of leadership in turbulent times, resulting in their likelihood of failure being much greater, because it's seen that they'll be soft and they'll be kind when the company's already going through shaky times. So they literally are put there to soften the blow. Despite all of these obstacles, there are many opportunities that we can all embrace. And it's not just leaning in. We need all different types of leaders, from the quiet to the loud. And through this research, I did discover one really cool way of overcoming some of these systemic issues. And that is that organically formed mentorship are the kinds of things that help women overcome some of these systemic issues within the workplace, but also it gets paid forward. Nearly everyone I spoke to who had received this kind of natural, organic support early on in their career would just naturally go ahead and pay it forward when they got into a position of leadership. 
ultimately, we want to get to a position of equality within the industry. We want men and women to be equally represented based on their merit and capabilities, but we need to get there quickly. And so one of the critical intervention points I discovered was this idea of equity. Equity is the equal access to resources that people need in order to flourish. And so we need to design workplaces that encourage equitable access. And one of the key ways of doing that is by fostering deep empathy, which is why the Gender Equity Toolkit is for both men and women. It's designed for the boardroom to the classroom to help bust some of these biases and re-script the codes that created them. So get out there, bust cognitive biases, start the important conversations, experiment with reframing leadership roles, and let's work together to make the design industry one of the most gender equitable out there.